Hello, welcome to the video. We're going to start looking at the deref trait. Also, we've recently looked at how you can implement traits. We're going to look at box as well and try and join a few things together. And once we've done that, we will then progress on to actually implementing the deref trait. So let's just look at this documentation briefly. I won't bore you with it. So implementing the deref trait allows you to customize the behavior of the, the reference operator. Why might you want to do that? Well, sometimes you might have a custom type that you need to dereference. And that's the whole point of what we're going to be moving on to here. So as they say, let's first look at how the dereference operator works with regular references. Then we'll define a custom type that behaves like box with generic type T. Let's get, go back to the code. And these are the basic examples that you'll always see when you start looking at pointers and references and so on. So you've got, let me just turn off the inlay hints, if I can. There we go. So x equals 5. And as we just saw, it's of type I32. So y is a reference to x. So y is pointing to x, but it's not actually representing the value. To get the value, that's when you need to dereference. Now, this is all about the fact that you can dereference y because it's pointing to a standard type, which is type i32. When we move on to um, box, we'll see why we need to use custom implementation of deref. So on the left, this compiles. No errors. Across to the right. So we've got a new box. If we just said x, so x equals 5, that's fine. If we just said 5, or y is equal to 5, it looks like it should be, because we're putting x. Let me just turn off inlay hints again. So we're putting x into a box. So we're putting 5 into the box. But what we're actually doing here is we're trying to say 5 is equal to the box that's got 5 inside it. And as you can see the error, we're trying to compare an integer with a box containing an integer. So I think this is really, really clear. This is this is a great way to kind of start to understand it. So without further ado, let's progress to a more real world example. OK, one little last bit of theory and then we'll do some code. So defining our own smart pointer. Let's build a smart pointer similar to box T type provided by the standard library to experience how smart pointers behave differently from references by default then we'll look at how to add the ability to use the reference operator okay so there's some code here but i don't know about you but how many t's are there one two three four five six six t's <laughs> right let's actually do an example because i think in real life we probably wouldn't be actually just seeing t's everywhere let's actually make this a bit more relatable so let's get started with some actual code Okay, still on the same page in chapter 15. This is the code that we're going to be implementing. <laughs> no pun intended. Why are we going to implement it? Because we are defining a custom struct called a car with a car that has a name, it's got a number of doors, and it's got an engine. Now, the engine could be a string, say, 2 litre, it could be 1600 cc, which would also be a string, or it could be 1600, 1800, whatever. I think you get the idea. With our impl, we're just going to make a, a builder function which just uh, creates it, creates a new car, a new instance of the car struct here. So again, car, angle brackets t, car, angle brackets t. So, uh, I used to forget to put the 
angle brackets t after impulse. So just remember you need that there as well because it implements the generic type t. And the return type also needs the angle brackets. There you see. So when we run this, we do get the dereference error or cannot be dereferenced because it doesn't know how to dereference a type car. It's not a standard type. So as per this code, which we were just kind of looking at a similar version, we have to specify target. And this is something which is kind of unique to deref. You, you have to implement your function. So deref, as always, is kind of like the lowercase version of, of the trait. Function name is the lowercase. Trait is the uppercase. We have ampersand self which you're probably familiar with, which is basically the name of the struct. Whereas this is referring to the instance of the struct. Um, target, so this is something which we need to be very mindful of. Target is type T. And then because we've used a tuple, we're referencing the first item in the tuple. So we're basically we're returning self, but the first part of it, which is um, dot index zero. Uh, There's a description there. Look. So back to this code. And what we need to do is the grayed out bit is very similar to what we just looked at. There we go. So impul t, and then we're going to use deref for our car target target equals type t. And then deref, as we just saw, which is same as this. So that's that's much the same, except for we're referencing engine here um, because we've got several things in our struct and we want to um, we've not used a tuple in this case we've actually used a normal struct so when we run this if i save that you see the little red warnings gone from there because now this little so the the whole point of all of this code <laughs> can be distilled down to that one asterisk there. Why do we need the asterisk? Because it's stored, or sorry, the instance of the car is stored on the heap. And we need to reference the engine, which is the value of the engine is stored on the heap, so we need to dereference it. When we run this, uh, why have we got an error there? Oh, sorry, because I commented out this, so yeah, because I just used uh, deref rather than standard ops deref, I need to add that line now. So if we run the code now, the referenced value equals 1600, number of doors for, car name is car. So I'm going to put this code on Rust Playground. Probably worth copying this code or experimenting with it, breaking it, um, attempting to remember how to write at least attempt to write that from memory without referring to any notes i think that's probably fairly straightforward to write from memory um, the impulse for the new that's probably doable from memory but i would expect if you're still learning rust from kind of begin from from scratch, this will take quite a few attempts, hours or days to gradually build up that recall in your brain. 
So just remember also that because we're using a normal struct, you reference name here and doors are there as well. Car are there. Um, sorry, box.car there. We, the re whole reason we didn't use the dot zero from here is because they just used a tuple. But as amazing as this documentation is, I think sometimes you can just get overwhelmed by <laughs> the number of T's. So by calling it a car with doors and engine and so on, it makes it kind of a bit more relatable, hopefully. This is, for me, this has been quite, um, I wouldn't say advanced, but it's probably, generics are something which, if you've come from Python, then you've probably, you're probably wondering why is all this needed? Um, oh, I'm not, I'm not capable of explaining exactly why, but it's because it's compiled. It's the short answer. Um, so thank you for watching. Let me know if this is good, bad, indifferent, incorrect, or if you would like any additional topics to be covered. The plan is, is to move from um, DREF and implementing traits I'll then gradually move across to doing more with box and then from box we'll look at smart pointers which will lead us on to mutex and eventually arc and reference counting and so on but one step at a time <laughs> yeah so chapter 15 of the rust documentation um, so 15.2 we're on here and as you can see, this will ultimately lead on to a drop there, so you can, the drop trait. Then we'll look at our C, ref cell, and then try to climb the mountain up to fearless concurrency, shared state concurrency. As you've seen, I've done a few small videos on this already, but there's a difference between doing little toy examples and really kind of getting dirty with it. So. I'll probably try and link this back up with Axum as well eventually, because I know that is quite very popular. And if I can just just chip away at some smaller parts of Axum just to kind of make it more bite-sized, I'm happy to do that. Um, I recently looked at the Axum repo, and you can clone the entire repo. And within the repo, there are lots of examples. There's a good one for it's called stream stream to file i believe um and you can just compile that cargo run uh once you're in the examples directory and then just do cargo run stream to file i think it is there's a nice example there where you can actually upload a file to the axum server so i will move back to that eventually i promise but um yeah there's still lots and lots of Base, I wouldn't say basics because we're on chapter 15, but there's still lots and lots of uh, kind of topics and things to break down and try and, I wouldn't say memorize, but at least be really, really familiar with. And I guess when you're looking at some code or even with error messages, um, once you know what the actual error message means, for instance, we've got that error message there, um, doesn't implement, car integer doesn't implement standard format display. So that's one error, but this is, again, this is the more, more important 1D reference. So although this is talking about display, we now know that the dereference part is kind of the, the more pertinent part of the error message. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll just make that fix that. I'll put this on Rust Playground, as I say, and feel free to copy it and modify it and, yeah, just <laughs> do what you want. Thanks for watching.